Hey, good morning, everybody. We are here with Triple Crown hiker Shira. Um, thanks her to her for doing this interview for us this morning. Sorry, we got we're kind of just on the porch somewhere because it's raining. So when you're hiking, sometimes you don't have a good spot to get in. So, but we're comfortable. This is Anonymous, his friend. Thanks to Anonymous for setting this interview up for us. We've had a great time hanging out with Shira this week. She had a zero. Um, she's currently hiking the Appalachian Trail. So good morning. You want to tell us a little bit about yourself, Shira? Good morning. Sure. Um, well, this is my second time on the Appalachian Trail. I hiked northbound in 2002, did a complete through hike, and this year I'm southbound. And I thought it would be fun for my 20 year anniversary of my first backpacking trip, falling in love with through hiking, and just missing the people in the community around such a popular trail um, that I wanted to come back and see what it was like sobo this time. Nice. Yeah, so I loved it the first time around, and um, it's been kicking my butt. It's really hard. Maine and New Hampshire are tough, um, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Super glad to be out here. Nice. And you also did the other two big trails. When did you do those? I did. So I hiked the Pacific Crest Trail in 2006, and that was before Wild came out, so there were only a couple hundred of us. It was a very different scene than I think what happens now, and before phones. So I hiked the first two trails, Appalachian Trail and the Pacific Crest Trail without a cell phone. And then I hiked the Continental Divide Trail in 2015. So um, yeah, that, and then, but before that I just, I've hiked, I think this is my 13th long distance trail and I may reach 13,000 miles on this hike. So I've really embraced the hiking culture and community and made it my job, made it my career. Do nice. you want to talk more about that as far as your job sure. and career? Yeah, so it was actually um, when I finished the Connell Divide Trail, I returned home to Bend, Oregon to find um, a trail I'd kind of peripherally been aware of was hiring for a trail coordinator, and that was the Oregon Desert Trail, which is a 750 mile long hiking route. So it's not a trail, it's a mixture of trail, cross country hiking, and dirt roads. And there are, I call it a virtual route because there are no signs. Um, no indication that you're on the trail. So it's like a very advanced form of backpacking um, When you're comfortable with route finding with map and compass with the remoteness with carrying lots of water It's the desert. So you might have 40 miles with without water um, So yeah, I've been doing that for seven years. I was the 10th person to hike that trail in 2016 and um, I'm on a sabbatical from work, so I'm out here and I'll return. Unfortunately, I can't do the whole ET this time. I'll have to return to work um, soon. So, uh, but it was great, the little bit I've been able to come out. And because I didn't need to make it to Georgia or Maine, I'm just hiking to hike. I can just have fun with it. So, nice. yeah. so you've been out here a few weeks now. Tell me this, um, what is one, one thing that you think is better about hiking the AT now versus 20 years ago and one thing that you think is maybe not as good as it was 20 years ago? Better. Well, I joked when I first started what has changed in 20 years. I said, you know, I think they've installed more rocks because um, <laughs> there are so That's many funny. rocks. But then I realized they actually have installed more rocks. So the trail crews in Maine have been installing all these staircases, these amazing staircases. And I've even run into a trail crew that was working on this very steep staircase. So they literally have been installing rocks. Nice. Um, so that was, what was your so question? That, so that's a better thing you yeah, would say? Yeah. Okay, what's, it, what's something you think that's not as good as when you hiked the 20 years ago? Not as good. Um, I don't know. It's such a different climate. I've been so used to hiking in the desert um, that just the heat and humidity. I want to say it's not as good. That probably hasn't changed, but I've changed in my ability to deal with the heat <laughs> and humidity. Um, I'm really glad I bought it, brought a double walled tent so I have some protection from, yes. the, from the rain and the condensation. Yes. I have an umbrella. Um, mm. But the whole time I've been sweating more than I ever have in probably like 15, 20 years. So so my ability to deal with the humidity and heat has changed. Okay. And Shira, I'm going to get Shira to tell a story again that she already told us at dinner the other night. Um, I'm going to assume this was your worst experience on any of the three trails. You want to talk about your CDT experience? Oh, I've had a lot of bad experiences, yeah. but one that was really traumatic 
Um, I, on the Continental Divide Trail, I hiked that one solo. I was by myself. And there was a lot of snow in the southern San Juans in Colorado. So I had, um, just briefly say, I had tried to ski Colorado as a, a solution to the avalanche train and a lot of a lot of snow. So I ended up taking a route down into the city of, of Lake City and I had, was over my skis. So I sent them home, but because I want to connect my footsteps to Canada, I um, walked out of town. First night, five day stretch between Lake City and Salida and my folks were coming out from Illinois to meet me in Salida in five days. So I had a timeline. Night one, I was at camp and I use an alcohol stove, a little beer can stove that I've made out of a, um, made myself. I was pouring um, the cooking dinner. I thought the flame had gone out and usually when I check the flame, I put my hand on it to feel if there's heat and then I blow on it to hear if there's a flame left. I did not do both um, and I thought it was out. I pour my alcohol into the stove and the ghost flame followed the stream of fuel up to the bottle caught the fuel bottle on fire. I dropped it, splattered alcohol all over the ground, caught on fire. It splashed, my hand was on fire and I went like this. So it caught my thermos on fire, my dog jacket on fire, my tarp on fire. Um, in a second, everything had changed. So I started throwing do dirt on everything. I threw dirt on the, the ground so I didn't start a forest fire in the bottle, the fuel bottle, so I wouldn't explode fuel all over everything on my tarp. I got all the flames out and then I had to assess the damage. Um, I had burns on my hands, fingertips, and my in my arm. But I was alone and it was dark by this time. So what I did was I put my water bladder, which had cool water in it, on the burns, on the rest of the burns, and I said I'll assess the damage in the morning. So in the morning I woke up and I had no feeling in the burns. So that means I, it was a deep burn um, and that could be pretty serious and what I needed to do is make sure it stayed clean and then I had to decide do I keep going or turn around. I knew if I turned around and because my parents were coming I probably would not complete that section between Lake City and Salida and I am a stupid through hiker and I want to do <laughs> every step and connect my steps and I just could not I did not want to skip any of the trail so I decided, and I'm a wilderness first responder and have been for something like 15 years, I decided, can I man, the, the question became, can I manage the injury in the field? And so I decided I could. So I kept hiking, I met a forest service crew, and I got some more first aid supplies. So then the, the, the trick was keeping it clean. Um, if the, pop, the blisters did pop, protecting them from infection. I had to cross a raging river because of snow melts full of cow poop. So I, I was real <laughs> creative and how do I cross with keeping my hand above water but not uh, falling into the stream. It took me like an hour and a half to find a good place to cross. But I did it. I like kept it clean. Um, and coming into the last day I was meeting my folks at Monarch Pass near Salida. I got back into the snow and the snow at this point it was mid-June, it was like mashed potatoes. It was rotten, and when you're post-holing, I was up to my upper thighs, and I was really kind of having to like crawl, army crawl, through the snow, almost like swimming. And then while I was doing that, there were mosquitoes out, and I was like, what circle of hell am I in? There's mosquitoes, <laughs> I'm swimming through the snow. And then of course, I'm above tree line, and a thunderstorm rolls through, and I could see the darkening sky. I had to go up, cut a cornice to climb up onto this ridge and I decided because of the storm and everything that I would take the Colorado Trail down instead of the Continental Divide Trail to escape the worst of the storm. So I glissaded down the, from the Colorado Trail down and pinwheels of snow were following me which is a sign of a wet avalanche. Like I could tri trigger a wet avalanche. That made me very nervous, but the mission was get to dry ground and like get out, get out. And so um, I had to post hole a while till I made it to dirt. And then the sky opened up and it just started pouring, like pouring, pouring rain. I was so beaten down, like burned holes and everything. I've been sleeping on the ground since the hole, I had a hole in my thermos. So finally I get to where I turn the corner, I can see my folks and I just start crying 
crying so hard. And my mom thought I was laughing, just like, yeah, 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 yeah. my parents are here. But I was broken. Like, I think at the time I was 35 and I needed my mother like I had never needed her before. <laughs> so they had driven their RV out. So I took two days off. They fed me lots of food, took me into Salida, I got some more gear to replace. I'd never use an alcohol stove again on that trip. I'm using one again on this trip, mm -hmm. but a different kind that I can turn the flame off. Um, so yeah, that was a pretty traumatic uh, story from yeah, the CBT. That's, that's awesome. Remember, do not try this home. She's yeah. a wilderness first responder, <laughs> so she knew how to take care of herself. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about your trail name. We always ask people about their trail names. You have the very cool name of She-Ra. You want to tell us how you got that? Yeah. So I grew up um, in the 80s, and the cartoon I watched a lot was She-Ra. And there was another one called He-Man. They were brother and sister, and they were masters of the universe. Um, it was a fun cartoon. So I started the Appalachian Trail in 2002 with a friend, my friend Cindy. We had both been in the Peace Corps together in West Africa. And this was our post-trip, um, trip, post-Peace Corps trip. So we decided to go out on the trail. It was day three. We are on Blood Mountain. And the first three days had been really cold and rainy and sucky. And it was my first backpacking trip. I really didn't know what I was doing. But I got to Blood Mountain and the the weather was beautiful, it was sunny, I felt strong. Um, we had been sharing a set of ski poles, so I took one of my cross-country ski poles on top of Blood Mountain and I said, I have the power! <laughs> uh, and she said, you have to be She-Ra, that is your trail name. So I was named She-Ra, um, and then over the years I've, I've kept the same trail name. I had a friend um, when I was on the PCT, we got to Ashland and we went to a Shakespeare festival Play, and they were selling plastic swords. So she bought me a sword in Ashland that I then carried in my hip belt to Canada. Um, I would practice sometimes on the trail. And then that same friend sent me a sword to Glacier so I could hike to Canada with a sword on the Cano Divide Trail. So oh I like to have fun with it out here. <laughs> what, uh, what, what is, do you have any other hikes planned at this moment after this one? Um, I say all of them. All of them are on my list. Um, yeah, I wanted to do the Pacific Northwest Trail potentially this year, but the fire situation in in the West, um, in Oregon and Washington, is dire. Every year, big swaths have been burning, and I kind of just didn't want to deal with that, so that's why I came out here, one of the reasons. But the Pacific Northwest Trail is high on my list. That one's 1,200 miles from Glacier National Park to the Olympic um, National Park on the, on the coast. But at the Hayduke's trails on the list, um, every everything's on the list. Nice. So it's a matter of time, really. Yeah. Also, she I've got a lot of people that watch that are kind of like I was watching everybody last year. They're thinking about doing a through hike, uh, but not sure. Maybe haven't hiked before at all, like me. What what advice would you give to somebody that's brand new to hiking and mm. is maybe thinking about doing like a long trail? Yeah, I think one, you don't have to spend a lot of money on gear, and two. Find out what you're, what makes you comfortable. Like what I carry is totally different than what Anonymous carries and what Number Two Pencil carries. And since you're going to be out for a long period of time, months at a time, what do you need to be comfortable? So I'm carrying a couple luxury items, like a coffee press, an Aero press. Um, I'm carrying this long sort of sarong type thing, which is a towel and a dress and a. I can bundle things in it. It's a pillow. Um, it's it's a sheet so it's what what do you need to be comfortable out here because that's ultimately if you're comfortable you'll be much happier and then on the money and gear part I've outfitted myself for the Pacific Crest Trail with all used gear I think I my whole kit costs less than a hundred bucks wow. um, and I've also made a lot of gear I used a trash bag for a rain skirt I do not have a pack cover I line my pack with a trash bag I've made stoves out of beer cans. Um, you can do it really cheaply. You can use a, a shower curtain as a A-frame shelter. Frame gateway, yes. <laughs> yeah. So don't let money daunt you and don't let, um, yeah, the comfort. And that might be take a couple shakedown hikes try out some gear. If you're really uncomfortable sleeping on the ground, like get a nice cushy air mattress, get a nice air pillow. I mean, the 
gear technology has advanced to the state where you can get really comfortable stuff mm. and not break your back. It might be a little expensive, but maybe you can make it. Nice. And like I said, Shira is a friend of Anonymous, and I think she was a big influence in Anonymous. This 500 mile hike she just did. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to say a little something about your friendship with Anonymous? I know y'all go yeah. way back and yeah. her hike that she just completed. We have known each other, uh, I think, since we were 12. So um, yeah, since since middle school, went to high school together, even went to college together, and we're college roommates senior year. And she lives in Oregon, just a few blocks away from me too. So it's fabulous. And she has heard me spouting about the magic of through hiking for so long. Um, I actually was like, just didn't think, she said, oh, maybe I'd try it. And the more I've explored that, she seemed open to it. So I am so thrilled that she came out, hiked 500 miles. And I think the first backpacking trip was last year, a two mile, one, four mile round trip hike. And then she was on the AT and she did it. She did 500 miles, which is astounding. I'm super proud of her. Nice. You want to tell us a little bit about your blog? Yeah, so I'll, I, I'll put a link in, uh, below and on the screen. Um, if you'll give us that information yeah. to make sure people can see that. Yeah, I love to write, so I'm a, a, a writer. I do a lot of, of writing for work and for fun, and I've written on every single trail. So I have um, daily blog entries on shirahikes.com is my blog. Um, Can you spell that, Shira? S-H-E-R-A hikes.com. Okay. No hyphen, right? No hyphen. S-H-E-R-A hikes. And, um, so yeah, you can find the Appalachian Trail this year, the CDT, the PCT, I've done the Colorado Trail, Arizona Trail, Northville Placid Trail, West Highland Way, um, Sunshine Coast Trail, a lot of trails. This is my 13th hike. Nice. So, um, and then my Instagram is We Are Hiker Trash. I did start and own a business for a while called Hiker Trash where I screen printed my designs on hats and shirts and all sorts of different things. Um, the business is no longer, but I still have the Instagram account, We Are Hiker Trash. Nice. Okay, we're going to give Anonymous a chance to ask her friend a question. So, what do you got, Anonymous? I think my, I, I think it's kind of piggybacking off of what Number Two Pencil asked about what has changed um, in 20 years, and so maybe not from a physical or gear perspective, but what has changed like mentally for you doing a long distance trail now versus when you were younger and some of these big climbs and stuff you said you didn't remember um <laughs> so like what does the lens look like now when she hikes yeah yeah i think um i didn't like i said i didn't know what i was doing when i first started and also 20 years uh my memory has been <laughs> uh, replaced with other fun memories from other trails and so it really was and i think as a nobo i was just in the in the zone, the Katahdin, like, this Katahdin was Trip pulling me closer and I just don't remember much of Maine or New Hampshire. So it's been really interesting and challenging to come back and hike that again um, and find, okay, I really don't remember some of this. So it's like a whole new trail and it's a different direction. But I think the biggest difference is I don't, I'm out here to just hike. I don't need to get anywhere. I can see I, my goal was to hike for two months and enjoy it and have fun and hopefully see Anonymous when our paths crossed, um, catch up with some other hiking friends, but really just hike to hike. Hike because I love the feeling of my body when I'm, uh, maybe not all the injuries that I've been having, that's another story, mm -hmm. but I love how strong I feel. I think I love my body most when I'm through hiking. Um, and that makes me feel very confident. So it's just kind of, I'm checking in with myself. And through hiking is the way I kind of check in with myself and where I feel most at home and connected to the world. I feel like I'm a part of nature when I'm living out here for a couple months at a time. And I think that's a healthy mindset to remind myself, this is what matters. Nature is what matters. The environment is what matters most um, for a healthy life. Okay. And one more, one more thing that uh, you said at dinner the other night, you know, a lot of people compare the three trails, 
you remember what you said about the one trail is this and one trail is that? Oh, Can yeah. You, she's going to tell you, like, her version of which trail. Just t t tell them about the three trails and the differences in them. Like. Yeah, so my analogy I came up with when I was on the Continental Divide Trail, and they at, people ask what's, how, what are, what's harder, what's easier, blah, blah, blah. I said, if the PCT is a purring kitten, the Appalachian Trail is an angry house cat that still has its claws, and the CDT is a mountain lion ready to rip your face off with one wrong move. Nice. That's, and, that's yeah. why people do the CDT last. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the challenges are magnified by so many factors, but you can't, there's not much room for error awesome. on the CDT. Awesome. Well, I won't take up your day. I know we all got to get back on the trail, but thank you so much. I've enjoyed hanging out with you. Thanks to Retread for making this happen. Um, Anonymous and I were talking about trying to get all three of us to meet up together. It seemed impossible, and then it was a miracle. It worked out just right. We crossed paths right where we were meeting with Retread, and we were able to hang out at the campground yesterday. Uh, Y'all saw another of her friends, uh, Nemo, in a video, I think probably yesterday or the day before or something like that. So. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed hanging out with you. Yeah. Hopefully, maybe we can go on a hike someday. So. Let's do it. Come awesome. out to Oregon. We'll hike the Oregon Desert Trail. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a good day. Yep. And Bye. And I'll talk to you guys soon.